lost 400 pounds. The weight I lost came to visit me last night. After my gastric bypass surgery the weight practically fell off. In a year and a half, I went from 650 all the way to 250. For the most part, it's all been amazing. I've been walking the two mile trail from my house to the river, and my knees don't ache half as badly as they used to. I even had sex the other week where my wife wasn't on top. Then last night I got up to go to the bathroom and saw the kitchen light was on. I knew my wife was in bed, but I figured maybe she'd accidentally left it on when she came upstairs. Nope. I walked into the room and nearly gagged. There on the floor, right next to the fridge was an orange and brown mass of pulsating fat that smelled like a rotten egg party. As I entered, the mass kicked out a gummy tentacle and wrapped it around my leg so that I tripped forward, falling into it. I landed elbow deep in the sludge as it congealed around my hands and knees. Then, in front of my face, a writhing hole opened in the sludge and a voice gurgled out. It was honestly disgusting, like when you hear kids burp the alphabet. I've been waiting, it said, wondering when he'd bring me back. But you never do. My heart is honestly still in terrible shape. Now it was probably going 200 beats a minute. I felt breathless, just as bad as I used to get going up a flight of stairs. What the hell are you? I asked, trying not to scream for help. I pictured drowning in jelly, the muck clogging my lungs. I'd worked so hard just to be able to catch my breath again. Can't you tell? It said, I'm you. I'm more of you than you are. I started as just a little piece, but I've been waiting for you, down below, where your pipes meet the sewer. Every day, I get a little bigger, and you get a little smaller. Please, I said, don't kill me. I've tried so hard to. I hadn't felt this scared since the heart attack. I'd only been 32, but there it was, like a fallen tree pressed against my chest. But this was worse, because back then I'd had less to lose. The thing let out a belching laugh. Kill you. Not a chance. I'm here to get the band back together. Just say the word, and I can make you whole again. Admit it. No matter what you think of this new, pathetic you. You. Are. Always. Hungry. I was starting to cry a little now. Because it was true. No matter how many times my wife told me she was proud or the doctors congratulated me on this great achievement, it never filled the pit in my stomach. And I knew that for as long as I lived, I would never be full. Never the way I wanted, never the way I used to be. The thing reached a tendril up to my mouth, but it didn't taste bad at all. The rancid smell was replaced with something amazing. Suddenly, it was like I was eight years old again at the county fair, eating cotton candy for the first time. Then the air was full with the smell of churros and elephant ears, buttery popcorn and deep friend Snickers bars. And then it was all gone. I found myself literally drooling, and my stomach stung like I'd been hit with a shotgun blast. You gave it all up, said the thing. All of your greatest joys. All for nothing. Then the thing put a tendril down my throat, reaching down into my guts. At first, I was gagging. But then it started to feel good, like my stomach didn't hurt anymore. For the first time in more than a year, I felt full. You could be so happy, it whispered. Almost like I was a marionette, I felt my hands lifting toward the door of the freezer, where I knew a carton of Ben and Jerry's was lurking. It was supposed to be for my cheat days, and only a few scoops here and there. My hands shook with fear, because I knew the thing was stronger than me, that it's what would trump mine. It was a 400-pound monster, and I was only a 250-pound guy with a weak heart. Just be happy, the thing whispered. What's so wrong with being happy? And I might have caved then and there. Except at that moment, I looked at the refrigerator door and saw the picture my wife had taped there just a week before, a sonogram. The little girl she's growing inside right now. I can't, I said, wiping away my tears. I can't eat for two anymore. And then I put the carton back in the freezer. The thing tried to hold on, but I stepped away. You'll be back, it burped at me, furious. I'll be here every night, and you'll always be hungry. But already, it was crawling back into the sink, down to the sewer drain. But this time I didn't respond. I took the stairs up to bed and snuggled up to my wife, wrapping my flabby arm around her, trying to hold on. 